All right, so in this video, we're going to be modifying the Vim text editor to be a little bit more proficient with using Python files. So generally Vim is pretty stripped down and we'll modify Vim so that we, we can get some IntelliSense going, we can get some syntax highlighting, and we can just be a bit more productive when we're programming Python. So let me show you what I mean first, so that way you can see what the end result of this video is. And if you like it, you can follow me to the end, and we'll set up your Vim in the same way. So I'm going to open up a Python file that I happen to have living on my desktop here in Vim, which has been modified. And you can see that if you are familiar with how Vim looks without any of these bells and whistles, it looks quite a bit different. Uh, you have syntax highlighting, you have uh, this line numbering. If you start uh, typing here, then you'll notice that there's these IntelliSense boxes that pop up as I'm typing. So it lets you know what you might be trying to type as you're typing it. If you open parentheses for a function like range, which is a function provided by Python, you'll see that this IntelliSense box pops up that tells you what are the parameters that this function takes, which is quite handy. So these things are generally provided in something like an IDE or maybe an enhanced text editor like Sublime Text, but are absent from more stripped down versions of text editors like Vim and Emacs. So if you want to switch over to Vim, if maybe that's something that you want to try and do, uh, but you're a little scared about the um, switchover process, then maybe this is kind of a nice in-between thing that you can get, even if you're not switching over, even if you're just trying to be more productive in the Vim environment when you're programming Python, this will hopefully help you do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit uh, this file here. And again, if you, if you like what you saw, Follow me to the rest of the video and we'll get your Vim set up in the same way. So I'm just going to clear this. So what we're going to do first is we're going to say sudo apt-get update, which we'll just briefly run through uh, an update here. And then what we'll do is we'll say sudo apt-get install Vim. If you don't already have Vim installed in your machine, this will install it. I already have Vim installed, so that's that. Uh, we do require two more things that we're going to um, have to put into the terminal here. And by the way, all of the lines that I'm popping into the terminal will be explicitly mentioned in the description. So you don't need to type anything out or pause the video and see what I'm typing. You can just go ahead and copy and paste those lines, put them into your terminal. You should be good. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to copy and paste one line off screen here. And the line that I uh, copied and pasted was just this one here. Just some further requirements for our purposes for the Vim plugin. The other thing that I will copy and paste off screen will be this line here. Uh, this is just a PEP8 library for Python. This allows us to check whether or not using the Vim plugin, whether or not the Python file is up to PEP8 standards. So for instance, if naming conventions and things like that are not upheld, this PEP8 stuff will be triggered and Vim will let you know. And uh, that's good because your Python files will be PEP8 compliant if you follow what, what the uh, Vim plugin is telling you. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to go ahead and clear the terminal again. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to modify our Vim RC file. So you may or may not have this file on your system. If you do, it'll be located in home if you're on a Linux box. So you can see right here, I have a Vim RC file. Now just note that if you follow this part of the tutorial all the way through, if you remove your Vim RC file, if you have previous configurations for Vim, all of those will be lost. So if I, if I remove this file, if I delete it, um, then basically Vim goes back to being regular Vim. Actually, let's take a look at that. I'm going to delete this file and then I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm going to open up the Python file that we had open before. So I'm going to say vim test2py and you can see here it looks quite a bit different than what we saw before where we had sort of the nice bells and whistles. We don't have any um, you know, uh, IntelliSense going on or anything like that. So it's pretty stripped down. So this is just vim as, as it is without any configuration. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a vimrc file. We're going to copy and paste some content from a GitHub that has the content um, for all the customizations that we're after. And then we're going to use that vimrc file for our vim environment. So again, let me get this clear. The vimrc file is going to come from this location here, which is a GitHub that has the vimrc file hosted for, um, which is quite helpful for Python, which is what we just saw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video for this GitHub here. In fact, if you click on this link in the readme file, you can get the, uh, you can download the VimRC directly from the website that corresponds to this repository. I'm going to go ahead, copy all of that, create a VimRC file in my home directory. Um, so go ahead and do that, say .vimrc. 
And if I just open up that .vimrc file, paste in all the content there, save it, go back to my terminal, open up the Python file again using vim, you'll see that the uh, you know vim looks like it initially did when we had the modifications. So that's good. So that's everything that we need there. So that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to show you how you can uh, very quickly modify your vim to be a little bit more friendly when dealing with Python files. There is a lot more to say on Vim customization, which I am not even going to attempt to go into in this video. Um, perhaps in subsequent videos, I'll follow up with some more information, but I myself am learning a lot of this as I go. This video is hopefully a learning experience for me as much as it is for you. Uh, so thank you for joining me in that. Um, hopefully it, if this video helps you become more proficient in Python, that's great. If you see any other modifications to the VimRC file that you that you like, that you have made, that you wanna share, please comment in this video. Um, thanks again for watching and good luck.